So this is where, um, by the time you're done with the cinema part, this is like what you would have at the end of it, okay? We would have a rendered out version of this. So kind of like our mini room at the end where we set it to the render queue and rendered it out when you could play it and um, see what it looks like. So that's what we would have. So here's my um, animation inside of cinema. Now since here, I've started re-rendering this. <clears throat> so I actually have, you'll see I have several iterations of my rendering because I have different things that I've played with. I played with the lighting, I played with the textures, I played with the camera movement. Okay, so right now it's actually going through and re-rendering it out. So for this one assignment, you may have four or five or six different times you've rendered it out to test stuff, to see what it looks like, to actually get a good preview of it before you go to the final version. Okay, so my final version, I believe, um, is rendering right now. So uh, what do we do once we get this done? We want to add in <clears throat> some background elements and foreground elements, okay? So what we're gonna do is, Cinema has a neat way where we could actually bring our Cinema project right into After Effects. And that's one of the reasons that we chose Cinema um, to use for this class so that we could do that kind of stuff. So if I'm inside of After Effects and I go to Import File, all I have to do is go and find my Cinema file there it is. It imports right away as footage. <clears throat> now this part does take some time. So if I were to click, it would say After Effects is not responding. It's just thinking. So you just have to give it a few minutes to think so it could import the stuff. And what we'll be able to do in here is actually layer our stuff inside there. So if we had a background image of clouds or a building or whatever, and we want to match this stuff up, we want to make sure that when we brought it in, it was nice and neat. So I'm just going to drag this comp onto my new, or drag this um, piece of footage onto a new comp. And what it does is says custom resolution must be uniform. I'm not sure what that means. It's never said that before. 960 by 540. What do you have in here? 960 by 540. Options. That should be fine. That was because I changed my um, preview to something different here. That's why that worked, or that's why I did that. All right, so what this does is you'll see <clears throat> we're essentially what we had inside of Cinema, uh, we have inside of After Effects. So when I hit play here, that's what we were looking at before. So it's pretty sweet how um, that's set up. Okay, now what I can do is I'm gonna go to this guy and <clears throat> Um, I can extract cameras okay so if I hit extract it pulls all the information so here's all the lights here is my camera so if I go and make a brand new solid where are you at sure uh, I'm gonna click on this far right button here if you're not fully immersed with After Effects it's fine because we're not gonna be going too in-depth with it so I'm gonna click on this far right button to make this a 3D layer. And then somewhere in here, I'm gonna scale this up. So I hit S, to scale it up. No, where are you at? Is that it right there? Yes, it is, super tiny. All right, so I'm gonna scale it up to ginormous proportions here. So I just hit S, scale it up really big. <clears throat> Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Now it's also kind of hitting us at a weird angle. Even though the original thing I brought in was kind of rectangular, it's coming in with this weird spikes because of the camera that I chose um, in cinema. So if I hit P, I can change the position of it. So I can just move it left or right. I can move it forward or back. Um, because of my scene size, I'm probably gonna have to hold shift just so it does it fast enough for me. Shift just makes it like bigger increments. I can also hit R and rotate it around. So I'm going to use the Y rotation and rotate this around. Come on. 0.2. Nope. Negative 0.2. Negative 0.4. Negative 0.6. Negative 1. There we go. Okay, I'll hit S again. I can scale it up. 
hit R again, maybe I need to rotate it the other direction too. There we go. So negative point three a little bit there, and maybe negative one point oops, point eight there. So close, negative point nine. There we go. Okay. So now if I go to my position, <clears throat> I can change where this is at. So I'm just holding shift and clicking and dragging on that Z. Now what's cool about this is once it's in position, and then we hit play, mm -hmm. you'll see that the camera that's inside of After Effects will move with it. So when I hit play, you'll see that as we get closer to our letters, we're also getting closer to this thing here. Okay, and that's really what we want. I don't need, once I've extracted my stuff, I'm not gonna need this piece of footage. I'm not gonna need that. Okay, so there is that thing getting closer to it. So I'm gonna make it a little bit closer, like, let's say there. Okay, just so the effect is a little bit more apparent. <clears throat> All right, so now you can see how I have that. Now, I don't want to have a solid back there because it doesn't make sense. What I want to do behind my word Gotham is I want to put um, the, the cityscape, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna bring in my image. So I'm gonna go back to my project. I'm gonna double click here or go to file import. <clears throat> and then I believe inside of there, There's my city. So I just drag this down. Oops. I make sure this is clicked. I hold down Alt and I drag this on top of it. And what it does is it replaces it. So whatever the rotation, position, scale of the one there, it automatically overwrites it. Okay. Now this is blown out. I can't even see this. It's from all my lights. So I'm going to turn off all my lights, not the camera, all my lights. There we go. Now once all your lights are off, what happens is it just goes to a default light. So now we can just see the sky right here. Okay, so now as we hit play, look, it's gonna get closer to the city, that's what we want. Okay, so as, our, as we're getting closer to the words, we're also getting closer to the city, which is very cool. Um, now what I also wanna do is I'm gonna double click. <clears throat> and here I have a, a, an image of water somewhere water right here and I'm not going to replace this one right I don't want to replace this piece of footage because I need to know that piece of footage right there uh, but what I can do is duplicate it and then alt drag this on top of it so now I have water that's in about the same rotation about the same position as the other one and then I'm going to rotate it so that it's laying down not like that nope it's so sensitive <laughs> There we go. And part of this is my camera. My camera just has a really big, um, really big focal, really small focal length on it. So now I'm going to push this down. I'm going to hold shift and then push this down. I'm going to make sure my scales are not like crazy. No, that's right. Uh, I'm going to switch to a different camera. I'm going to go back to just my regular oops, front view here. All right, I'm going to make a brand new camera because this one is not uh, playing nicely. So everything should be good here, just the default settings. Camera 2. I'm going to hit the camera button here, and I can zoom out. So what I want to do is I want to make my sky <clears throat> and then make this and not have it do this, what it's doing. Um, it might be easier if I make this in a different composition because it just seems to be bogging down, which I was doing it earlier today. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> And 
and part of this is the Cineware, that link between Cinema 4D and um, After Effects does cause it to slow down a bit. I think the other thing is just it doesn't like how I'm playing with the camera. <clears throat> so I'm just going to import those two pieces of footage, my um, Cityscape, my Clouds. I'll just import all four of these. These are the four pieces of footage I want to use to combine together. Um, I'm going to make a new composition. This is going to be 960 by 540, so I may have to unlock it, type those in. Uh, the duration of five seconds, five zero zero should be good. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna drag these down and just kind of line them up. So here is my city right here. And then one of these is my water, there it is right there. Okay, so I'm gonna make both 3D. I'm gonna take the water, which I can just hit enter and rename water. And enter and call it a city. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the water and just rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, maybe actually 75 would work too. And then you can see if I kind of position this there and maybe scale it down a bit, it'll actually seem like that's the water for that image. Okay, now that's not a big deal because we could have just done that inside of Photoshop. But the idea is that once we create a camera, And once we go to this camera, and we're zooming in and out, what we should be able to do is get the effect of this thing actually feeling like there's uh, water that's moving a little bit different. I'm gonna take the water and also reposition it. I need to change the Z of this just to get a little bit closer. And I'm gonna rotate it a full negative 90. There we go. Okay. So now when we go back to this camera move and we're zooming in, you can see how the water is kind of interacting a bit different than this than the background. Okay? So it's kind of feeling like 3D inside of After Effects. All right. So that's what I wanted to create with this. So now let's import this other piece of footage and hopefully it doesn't crap out again. So I'm just importing my cinema stuff. <clears throat> I'm going to just to keep things clean. I'm going to put it into a new composition. I'm going to extract the information. Uh, let me make sure that's right. Yep, that's right. Uh, extract the information. And I'm just going to grab this camera and copy it. And then come in here and paste it. Okay, so here's my cinema camera. So now I can look through my cinema camera and see as I get closer what it's doing. <clears throat> and you can see this time too, just me creating the cinema camera again and repositioning it in here, it made it a lot nicer. My camera doesn't feel like so far, doesn't feel like that crazy distortion it was on earlier. So now I can grab my city and just reposition this. Then grab my water and reposition this. Oops, I scaled it, I didn't move it. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my city and just make it a little bit bigger. And maybe move it up some. Like that. And then take my water and do the same thing. So I'm just repositioning the water here. Scaling it up. Maybe I'll rotate it so it's not at 90 fully. It's kind of like that. And stretch it out some here. There we go. Okay. So now, do you see how it feels more like we're going across the water? Okay, so that's what we want to do. Now we could, in cinema, create water that looks like water and interacts like water, but to render that out would take an incredibly long time. All right, um, ooh, we're thinking again. <laughs> we'll wait for it to get done. So the idea with this is that we're able to quickly edit it. We're able to quickly just go in here and move it. Now because the water and the sky are not um, part of the main idea. The main idea is Gotham. Those are just extra things in the background. That's what we're concerned with is the text being 3D and being the most prominent. These are just extra things that are in the background. Okay, so that feels like we're actually flying over the water. Even if we don't animate this water at all, it still feels pretty decent, right? Um, now we could go into, oops, click the water, could go into the effects, go into distort, 
and we could add in um, some different things like Ripple would do some stuff. Um, uh, turbulent display, displace would do some stuff. Okay, so you can see as I move how it's kind of kind of warpy here. If I change this evolution, you can see how I can get it to look like it's actually some sort of movement in the water. Okay, so I could go through and animate these properties. So I could just click on evolution here, advance my time to the end. Maybe. And then adjust it and it'll set a keyframe for it. Hey, why don't you go to the end? There you go. Now it's obviously too close to the end, so we may have to adjust some of our stuff, but that's fine. All right, so now we're getting some sort of movement on the water, nothing crazy, just a little bit. I'm going to take this down to a quarter just so this goes a bit quicker. Yep, it's right around three. It's like locking up. So there must be something around here it's not liking. All right. So once I have the water, once I have this, <clears throat> then what I want to do is bring in my other pieces of footage. I want to actually bring in the logo. So once this unlocks, then I can go back to my project and import the logo into my project. once it's done. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna go to my renders and I'm gonna find my latest render. And it is should be 926. Oh, this is the wrong one. That one. There we go. Okay, so this one only rendered to 114. It's still going right now. Now inside of cinema here, when I went to render this, <clears throat> What I had to make sure of is that this alpha channel button was clicked. If the alpha channel button isn't clicked, when I bring my footage in, it's gonna be completely black background and text on top of it. And there's no way to pull it off nicely um, with that. So I make sure that's clicked so that when I render it, I get this message saying, what do you wanna do with the alpha channel? So I'm gonna say pre-multiply it, hit okay. And now what happens is I, I drag this down you'll see that my text is right there. Now, if I didn't have an alpha channel, like this one, I know I don't have an alpha channel on, it won't give me that message. I'll drop it on here, and that's what I get. Okay, so you see how we have all this black here? That's what we have to get rid of. So that's why we tell it to use an alpha channel, and what it does is finds out, here's your geometry, here's what you created. I'm gonna draw a mask around all of this stuff, and that way you can pull it off and separate it, okay? So there's our word Gotham. <clears throat> I'm just gonna set my work area to about there so we don't go too far, okay? So now what's happening is it's matching up. Now I don't need to make this, I don't need to make this piece of footage a 3D layer because that piece of footage, it already has that movement to it. It already has the 3D move. All we're doing with the other stuff is just adding it into that, okay? So now we're going in here. Now I need to make everything kind of sewed together a little bit better. So my <clears throat> city, obviously I should have maybe um, this a bit darker. So I can go to my color correction. I can go to um, exposure, let's say, let's try that one. And we can maybe knock the exposure down. There we go, okay. We can also adjust the gamma oops, to knock that down too. Now I may want to go in here and adjust my curves. Okay, may I want to darken my lights and there we go. So now we have something that looks a little bit more fitting compared to that. Okay, I'll do the same thing to my water. I'll grab my water. I'll go to my color correction. I'll go to um, let's say exposure. Oops, not offset. So I can knock the gamma down, play with the exposure. If I don't like what I'm getting, I'll adjust it. I'll change it. I'll do something different. 
There we go. So something like that, okay? <clears throat> Alright, now I may want to um, have something in front of this too. That's why I have the clouds here. So I'm going to drop the clouds into my scene. And I'm going to cut it out. So I'm going to go to my pen tool. And I'm just kind of drawing just kind of like a cloudy, puffy shape here. Okay. Then under the pen tool, there's this feather. So I'm going to click on that and pull it out. And all that does is just kind of soften the mask so it's not a hard edge. And then what I can do is make it a 3D layer by clicking this. And then just changing its position. Scaling it a bit. You'll see how we get this kind of layer of cloud here. Now it might be a little bit too much, so I can hit um, this switches in mode and just change this. So instead of it being normal, just like Photoshop, instead of being normal, I could set it to darken. That didn't do anything. Set it to multiply. Eh. Set it to add. Okay, that might work. I'll hit T and then I can adjust the opacity of this. Okay? So now you see I have this layer of cloud happening right here. Now it's gonna look weird if I just have the cloud sitting right there in front of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Z of the cloud and kind of pull it close. Like there. Okay? Because what I want is my camera to actually go past it. And you can see how it does it right about here. My camera actually flies through that image and gets to the other area. Again, it's going incredibly slow because of working with cinema and this. So right about here, it goes through it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have multiple versions of this that are all kind of like moving sideways. So it feels like we're actually floating through some sort of cloud. So I'm going to rewind it to the beginning. I'm going to I'm going to hit caps lock just so that it doesn't try to update and that should go quicker. I'm going to set a keyframe, move it up to, a bit to the end. I thought that would go faster. And I'm going to say do fast draw or just turn See if that gives me anything, any quicker view. Faster. All right, and then I'm just going to take this over to the side. So I just moved it. So it was I. I can't really see it from back here. If I go to my regular camera that I had, or my um, top view, I can actually see it from the top view. Here is that Scott, that uh, cloud. You can see how it's just moving to the side. That's all it's doing. Just moves to the side. So I'm going to duplicate it, <clears throat> and I'm going to use the anchor point just to offset it some. Okay, so I just hit A. So I'm going to probably push it back a little bit further. There we go. Duplicate it again. Hit A for anchor point. Use shift to scoot it over. Shift, drag that back. There we go. Okay, so now we're basically going to be going through these different levels of, of smoke. Turn my caps lock off. There we go. Okay. Now all of these I probably need to also hit T on and adjust their opacity even further. Maybe even take these masks. And just adjust that a little bit further. Okay. So it needs some adjustment, but you get the idea of what's happening here. We're actually floating through these clouds. So I need to adjust how sharp this is here. Um, this is just too close to the top, so that's just got to come down. And then this can come out some more. There we 
we go. And they're moving too quick. I definitely need to slow them down some. So I could go into each one of these positions and just pull that really far down. There we go. So now it feels like we're going through one of those clouds. Okay. And then what else do I have here? I have that. I could also use that thing. Okay. Now, just so you can see, just another way to use this, <clears throat> if I drag it in here and double click, I can use the pen tool to um, really isolate this stuff. So I could just go in and just kind of outline this. There we go. And then use the feather tool to feather this out. Now, when I pull it out like that, it feathers all of them at the same. Uh, but if I go over here, I can drag its own feather so that way it kind of transitions. So here it's kind of crisper, and then back here it's a bit softer. So when I close this, I have that. And then I can go to scale and I can scale it down. And I could make this a 3D layer by clicking here and making it 3D and then just moving this into position. And then hitting T, and I can adjust the opacity of that. I think I really need to scale it up some too. Okay, and then maybe even on this, I can add some distort uh, wave warp inside that. Nope, I don't like that one. Uh, try some distort. I want wave warp. Turbulent displace. And you can choose from the different ones. If you don't like one of them, maybe you'll pick a different one. And then I just animate this effect. So I click on the key here go up to the end, wait for it to update, and then I click and drag this. And there's something happening here, that's why that's that specific area is just stopping. <clears throat> So now that's kind of deforming too, and then I could also hit P, click a position keyframe here, scoot this over some, maybe even rotate it some. So I can click a rotate keyframe there, go up a little bit. And I'm dragging these down. I make the keyframes here and then I drag them down just so it doesn't lock up on me. Okay. And then I really think I need to adjust that opacity some more. There we go. So now it just feels kind of smokier. Okay. So now once this is done, you'll have. <clears throat> you're basically, the, the, this is complete. We have a background, we have a foreground, everything's kind of like in a scene. We could go back down to our footage Oops. right here. I could enhance the footage so I can go to color corrections and I could, let's say I needed to make it a little bit more vibrant. So I can go to hue and saturation and I could bump the vibrant saturation up. So now the blue is like a really blue. Here it is before, there it is after. Okay, so if I really want to push these colors, I could do that. And there's my pinky, orangey, red. There it is before, there it is after. So I may want to, again, kind of boost what this is looking like. Uh, I'm going to put this to full just so I can see what the final image is looking like. I may also want to put a curves on here just to help darken my darks and lighten my lights. Okay, so now that reads a lot better. 
especially compared to what we had originally, which is just this, right? That's kind of boring. Now we've actually built a little scene and have a bit more stuff going on. Okay, it needs tweaking. These masks here need definitely need some working out to blend in a little better. All right. So once you're done in cinema and you've modeled it, you've added your lights, you've animated your camera, <clears throat> and you're satisfied with it, that next step is going to be going into After Effects and putting all this stuff together. And then once it's all done, you'll go to Export, you'll go to Add to Render Queue, you'll go to Lossless, and this is the same stuff that we did in another one. QuickTime, Format Options, H.264, under the Not Yet Specified, we put this into our folder, Sarcona underscore title sequence, and then we render it. Okay, so by the time you're done, you'll have a movie and you'll have your other stuff. Now, why is it doing that? <laughs> What'd you do to me? Come on now. Comp one. Oh, it probably rendered from the other camera, which is my camera one. Yep. Delete camera one. There we go. So because I created an extra camera, that's why I did that. So I'll make another camera, or I'll delete the camera, go to QuickTime, Format, yes. I'll go to my best settings here and make sure that everything is set up there. Yep. Doing it again. settings, one mode, custom, field, oh, ah, he wasn't on, so his eyeball was turned off, there we go, and one more time, <laughs> I had to run the queue, it's always something, so again, quick time, 264, yes, that name, Yes, render, and there we go. Okay, so then it'll make my movie. Now it's not done rendering my movie, so it's not gonna render out the entire thing. It's just rendering that little clip that I have. Okay, so then once I'm done, I'll have a movie sequence and I'll have all my other stuff. Okay, so the turn in for this is very similar to the other one. You copy your folder to the desktop, I didn't save my After Effects project yet. the long one again. A comp title. There we go. Okay. So you copy your folder to the desktop and you can delete all of your rendered images. I don't need your rendered images in here. You can delete all of those rendered images that you have inside of your renders folder. Okay. So I don't need those. I just want to see your movie and then I want to be able to see your Cinema 4D file and see your After Effects uh, file. Okay, these are all just test render logs or logs uh, that Cinema has. You can delete those too. That doesn't matter. Those don't take up too much space. So this is what you should have by the time you're done is you have your textures. You have nothing in the renders folder. If you have an illumination folder, you don't have anything in there. 
and then you have your After Effects project, your cinema project, and then your final movie that I could then go through and click and then play and then see your movie. Okay? And then you're just going to take that folder onto the Z drive, onto 2510, onto my name. And then you would just drop it right in there on the Z drive. Okay? So your folder should be about, mine's 82 megabytes. Yours should probably be a lot less than that because you have less textures than I probably have and your scene may be a bit smaller than mine, okay? So once that's all done, that project is done.